Oh, don't die. Don't die. Bat out of hell. <laughs> hey, skiers. I'm Jeff from SkiEssentials.com. I'm Bob. How's it going? And I'm Matt. Um, about a year ago, a little less than a year ago, we did a video introducing the new wrestler, and I don't know why I'm pointing over there to Shiva. I was going to say wrestler and Shiva, but there aren't any Shivas over no, there. Just wrestlers. But anyways, about a year ago, or mid-January last year, we did a video talking about the new wrestlers and Shivas. Um, Bob, way back in April, we did a Wrestler 9 review. Yep. Um, kind of followed that up with Emily with a Shiva 9 review. And this Wrestler 10 is one that... I've been really excited to do a longer video on. We had it in comparisons, we had it in ski tests, so people yeah. have seen it in video format, but not in a long form discussion. Um, and yeah, welcome to a set that we just created moments ago. Uh, Matt, I'm excited to have you in as part of this conversation. Excited to be here. It's um, an exciting ski, exciting topic. It feels like a ski that kind of matches what you like to do on skis very nicely. Totally. Embodies everything that I like to do when I ski. Yeah. So uh, it fit my style very, very well. And I was very happy to get out on that. Yeah. Um, if you've been watching the weather in Vermont, uh, it took a turn for the worse recently. But before that, we had ph phenomenal or fantastic, either one. Yeah. Uh, we had phenomenal conditions to start the season. So... Um, I don't know if we had anything that I would go as far as calling like a pure powder day, but we certainly got close. Very close. Yeah. Um, so we times. had some great conditions to to kind of bring the Rustler 10 back out. Um, and yeah, without further ado, uh, I think most people are familiar with the changes to the ski at this point, but I thought it was worth doing a refresher. Yeah, I think so. Um, I mean, it's, it's certainly different enough from the old one. And yeah, I don't know where you found that. Matt found Sorry, it. Sorry, I don't know where it. you found that. Because yeah. I thought we were long sold out of previous so Russell. The last one left. <laughs> the very last one. I don't think it's an inventory, technically, because it's not showing up on the website as far as I'm concerned. That is probably something I should fix. <laughs> it's fine. I don't think that's your responsibility. <laughs> um, so, anyways, like you said, Bob, we do have the old ski. Do you want to give us a recap summary of changes to construction in this new Rustling. Yeah. Um, the old one that you have there, Jeff, really focused on having that central cord of metal through and yeah. kind of tapering to the to the middle in the tips and tails. Yeah. And, and right yeah, the new one basically flips that around. They still use a full sheet of metal underfoot and then they use arms that extend through the tips and through the tails. They don't go all the way to the tips, um, so it does end kind of maybe five centimeters before the tips and the tails. And that just allows these metal arms to really articulate and kind of stay glued to the snow. Uh, the other big addition here is the implementation of their True Blend free wood core. Um, so we get wider stringers of poplar and polonia kind of you know spaced out equally and then stringers of beech. So the denser beech wood yeah. kind of mimics what that had going it's like on. A very similar shape even. Yeah, so like it, there, there's more in the middle and then as you get closer, they just kind of, they stop and the central ones extend longer. Yeah. So it mimics how the metal in the older rustler kind of kept the front of the ski damp and, and the back for that matter. Uh, damp and stable and connected to the snow um, while leaving the sides a little bit lighter. And basically they just balance that with the metal uh, in, in this new Rustler. Yeah. Um, so pretty sophisticated technology. We've been waiting for a while for True Blend to come into the, to the Rustler line. Yeah. Uh, and they did that. Plus uh, this new metal laminate really makes this ski stand out from kind of a technology uh, standpoint, which is pretty cool. Um, a couple things worth emphasizing. 
those, it's three separate pieces of metal, um, which I think is, is just an interesting contrast to say like the H shaped metal. Right. In um, like one cut in black rose yeah. or, yeah. or say, yeah. Um, I think that's the best example. There's other skis that we could use like mind benders, you know, there's some similarities there. Um, but this is one sheet of metal here and then each edge gets its own sheet of metal. Yeah. Um, and I think it's really interesting, kind of what you were saying about True Blind Wood Pour. Uh, it's almost like like they change the uh, responsibilities of the materials. Yep. You know what I mean? Where like this ski, the placement of metal was changing the flex pattern in the tips and tails, allowing the tips and tails to like be more free and more soft. Yep. Where now like the wood core is controlling the flex pattern, which just leaves that metal laminate, the, the flux form, Bob, to, to control just like more vibration damping. You can certainly feel it in the smoother flex. Yeah. Like that definitely is one of the bigger like things from a snow feel standpoint. 100%. Is that you can feel like the density of the wood and the stringers and the metal. Yeah. Really working in harmony to dampen the ski. I agree. 100%. Whereas the older rustlers seem to have a little bit of a, a hinge. Yeah. You know, where the, yeah. the front would flex and then it would hit the metal and then everything else would kind of tip that way. Yeah. So this is, it feels more sophisticated in how they're building the ski and putting these materials together. Yeah, considerably more sophisticated, Yeah, I would say. Um, I forgot my prop sheet, but I do remember. Uh, I, I was gonna <laughs> say, dude, I don't see a prop sheet, but that's all right. Um, the new one is also 200 grams lighter Which uh, is in the 180. Significant. Yeah, so they've dropped that weight. Uh, you know, kind of what we talked about, if you ball the metal up, you know, there's <laughs> Less probably of less of it in the new one um but also just a just a different way of of building the ski through the wood uh drops drops some wood. yeah i'd probably you know not being a an engineer nor a ski manufacturer but i would give credit to the the true blend yeah you know that polonia and poplar that, yeah. those are two very lightweight woods um and yeah you know there weren't too many complaints about this ski no but thing was great if you did hear a complaint it typically had the word hinge in it yeah or like folding like sometimes it could feel like the forebody of the ski was was folding yeah. a little bit matt did you ever ski these i did not that doesn't surprise me because you're pretty new to the ski industry yeah but you're the type of skier that like that tended to happen on the you know hinge, you're the hinging guy yeah like, you're so a big strong guy just push through a yep, little bit. ski pretty fast and you would just get like you know, depending on how you were weighting the ski, if you were trying to initiate a turn, for me, it happened more on firm snow. If you were like really initiating a turn in the shovel of the ski, like is often instinctually the way that you want to do it, you could kind of like stuff the tip a little bit. Gotcha. Um, which admittedly, like never happened to me at 160 pounds, but I could feel that that was happening. Yeah. Um, and then I will say for me, with sure. this new one, that never really happened. At it all. didn't like, seem like it, it seemed like yep. you know they solved that issue because that that thought never came to mind and then speaking to what bob was saying about the weight 1950 per 1850 ski. right in the 180 sorry yeah yeah, so, yeah we've kind of had two different reference points yeah so what you were saying you're probably right 1950 gotcha yeah. either way it didn't feel like that it yeah. didn't feel like it was around 2000 grams it felt much you think it feels lighter i thought it felt lighter for me Interesting. Or, i might just be stronger now i don't know <laughs> compared to last year maybe Let's hope. Another Let's year of mountain biking yeah. under your belt. Yeah. Um, and then, Bob, you and I were, were sitting in our office just now, kind of like talking specifically about shape. You want to hold that one for sure. me? Um, and there are some differences in shape here, but it's largely the same. Yeah. When we look at what Soothski had for their like profile shots and their top shots, like yeah. very similar. The biggest outlier is the tip splay and the amount of rise yeah. in the new rustler. Yeah, here, let's do a little fun. Yeah, so like camber. Let's really see it there. Camber is pretty much the same. Yeah. Tail rocker is pretty much the same. Turn radius. Turn radius, identical. Um, you know, they, I don't know if you can feel it through there, but they're, they measured that they dropped a millimeter out of the waist. I can feel something, yeah, but I don't. I can't really <laughs> tell what it is. Um, but yeah, the biggest difference was in the rise of the new Rustler 10's shovel and yeah. how high that goes up. 
I keep like coming back to a visual thing that uh, that that keeps happening to me. The new one like has a rounder like vibe to yeah. me, and I don't even really know if it if it's true or not. But something there's like a visual cue for me. Sure, I'm like this ski is rounder, and then like not to get ahead of ourselves, but I feel like roundness kind of comes through in the way that it skis in some situations. At least for me, I find it makes very round turns. Yeah, I know what you're saying. And I, I feel like we said that a lot about the nine. Um, and it makes sense that it that that yes. carries forward into the 10. Yeah, the nine and the 10 are pretty similar. Yeah, I think so too. You know, it's mostly yeah. like a, a difference in width. Yeah. Um, but they, they have pretty similar personalities Slight change in their rocker and stuff like that, but yeah, yeah pretty pretty similar personalities. Um, so I thought what would be fun in this video is we've each skied them, we've each had our own unique experiences on them. Um, Matt, you spent a lot of time on there on them recently. I did. Do you want to go first and share your experience on this new list of ten? Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, we were blessed to have a lot of fresh snow every yep. day that we were on them. Yep. So, um, you know, we have perfect pack groomers and then also some fresh snow to take it off trail or onto ungroomed terrain. And for me, I definitely took probably two or two or so runs to really get used to them. But then once I understood them and how they like to be skied, I really, really enjoyed them. Um, especially on trail, they came alive, really nice round turns. Yeah. Um, really poppy, like they really like to jib a lot more than I thought they would. I thought that they would be more so just something that you would want to charge on, but I felt like I really wanted to play around a lot more than I, I thought. I agree a hundred percent. But then once we took it off trail into some moguls um, with some snow in between them, um, you know, that is where it really came alive for me. I felt like there was so much flotation in the overall shape that it was either like I was floating through the troughs of snow filled moguls or skipping over the top and sometimes skis like this can get kind of bogged down or deflected and I did not feel that with these these just felt like you were just skipping a rock on water and then whenever I wanted to change direction there was a lot of edge grip and a lot of a lot of ease in trying to control your speed and I think that that really comes down to that new um tighten the layup that they did um, yeah I mean I can't compare it to the old one but I really think that that is a great, great choice that they made. Um, so, yeah. Um, I mean, yeah. I don't want to like get too ahead of what I'm going to say in, in my assessment of performance, but I, I agree with what you're saying. And like, I feel like they kind of nailed the combination of playfulness and maneuverability from the shape, totally. but then like enough supportiveness in the construction that you get not getting deflected all the time. You like, you, it's not. You know, I don't. I wouldn't go as far as saying it's a chargey ski, but there's enough of that. I think. Yeah, and yeah. if I wanted it to be a charger, I would likely go with the 192. If I was out west. Yeah. So you've been skiing the 186. Yeah. 6'2", 200, 200 pounds. 186 feels pretty good for you. For here in Vermont, absolutely. Yeah. But if I was out west, that would be on that 192. Yeah. In a heartbeat. Um, yeah, and. It was just, it was so much fun. The only thing that I kind of was a little iffy on was in those moguls because that tight frame is raised a little bit. Oh, I yeah, did I feel like that. my my tips were sometimes just catching and then it took a second for them to come back. That was a little scary, but I mean, it might've just been my skiing that was not up to par. But um, other than that, I had a fantastic time and I would venture a guess that your tips aren't crossing all the time when you're skiing. So I bet it's some some amount of like you adjusting to the ski yep. and the ski not like not reacting to your skier input, your physical movements the same way that like your own personal daily drivers do. Totally. So I bet that's where that's coming from because it never happened to me. But I remember you saying that, and I was like, oh yeah, that's pretty interesting. I can see how that. Would sure. Be a thing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that was the first day that I noticed it. The first day that we were on, that's when it was happening, and right. never again. Yeah. So, so I think that it, that's what it came down to. Yeah. Just that. So it's just be careful of that your first day on. Possibly. <laughs> <laughs> just, just keep that in mind. Like after that, you'll be fine. But. Yeah. 
It hasn't happened to 66% of the people in this video. No. So. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully you're okay. Um, but no, yeah, I thought, I, like, you know, when I think of you as a skier, I think of like skiing pretty fast, skiing anywhere on the mountain, any conditions. Mm -hmm. And then like you popped a switch a lot and stuff like that, where like this ski feels like it can do all of those things. Totally. And like, I wouldn't go as far as saying it's a park ski, and I'm not like as an insult, I don't know if I would go as far as calling you a park skier. Not so it like kind of, it all like meshes pretty nicely. I would put a shift on these. Oh, that's that's fun. That's probably what I would do. I mean, my my other touring ski is a QST 106 and a QST right. 98. Yeah. I'm, and that's, I'm okay with some That's weight. not lighter. No. It's heavier. This is lighter, yeah. yeah. Like I would be perfectly happy with a shift or even a kingpin if I was really wanting to go for it, but. I'd be perfectly happy with that too. So there's a range of a range of applications that I think these are good for. Cool. Um, Bob, you're up. What, okay. do you, what do you think? A lot of those things that Matt talked about definitely carry through. And it's really kind of the blend of these attributes that make this thing special. It's gonna be really hard to talk about anything different than you guys. <laughs> but I found one thing that this ski does better than most other skis that are in this zone of being crud, chop, carving, playful, flotation. Okay. This thing pivots. It does, yeah. Really, really well. Yeah. yeah. So the the pivoting aspect, if I like you kind of have to search for a superlative to yep. for a ski like this. And we dealt with this with Wrestler 9. It's like this thing is built to do everything. What right. does it do better? than other skis that are also built to do everything. Sure. And I found that pivoting is where it's at. I actually skied a bunch of moguls on these skis and in the 186 as well. I'm glad you brought that up because I was gonna bring that up. Oh, you cool. <laughs> <laughs> so like, you know, you're not thinking of a 102, 104 millimeter ski with metal to be like our great mogul ski. Correct. But the way that this thing is able to make Quick pivoting turns is an absolute highlight for me. There's just nothing else out there with metal that charges, that carves, that goes through crud, that also pivots like this Rustler 10. Yeah. So being able to make those short, quick turns sets you up for success when you're not on groomed terrain or in something smooth. And so <clears throat> that pivoting ability, that mobility of the ski really translates well to when you have to make a turn. Yeah. So when you're in technical terrain, when you're in adverse snow conditions and you need to make a turn, that's where this comes in handy in a real life situation. So like most people can get on this thing and ski a groomer and have a great time. And most people can ski powder and have a good time. Yeah. It's easy and it's intuitive, but where it really excels is when things get a little tricky yeah and you need to and you need to get the thing around so the lighter weight the stability of the metal underfoot and just the ability of the ski to get you know a little bit little bit loose yeah. you know there's not a ton of camber underfoot so you are sitting a little flatter than the snow and that helps a ton so for me the pivoting stands out it does all of those other things that you talked about yeah. and I'm sure you will as well, does them great, but the ability of it to get from one turn to the next is is incredible. And to piggyback on that, when these skis really came alive for me was when I was follow camming you down lift line and all those And you had to make a bunch of movements. Yeah. That's like, where yeah, I was like, oh, I get this now. to make yeah. turns. Yeah. Yeah. And it was so easy. I was so happy to be on yeah. those. And yeah, good filming yeah. ski. Yeah, unbelievable. Yeah. yeah. Um, since you had plenty of experience with the previous Rustler 10, yeah. we always talked about that as being one of the best Vermont tree skis. Totally. Very easy. Yep. Do you think we've lost anything on this? Or do you think we've retained everything that's great about it being a good tree ski? Uh, it's a balance. So like what you lost with, so we talk about that hinge as a bad thing, right. but not in the trees. Sure. Like that's, that's where, where it's it a helped. nice thing. It, yeah. gets you, it gets you up and out and they kind of balanced it with the higher uh, tip splay. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, it's a give and take. I would say it's pretty even, um, maybe a little bit more of the, the new one, I think is a little bit more mobile, but 
yeah. not much. It's pretty similar. Sure. That's what I was expecting yeah. you to say. At least for me, it feels like they've retained its tree scheme performance. Yeah, um, it, it didn't lose anything. Yeah. By putting metal in the forebody and through the tail of the ski, I don't think. No, I agree. Yeah. Um, is it my turn? Yeah. Cool. My favorite thing <laughs> <laughs> that you did is in the intro. Oh, sure. Uh, just sending it off a mogul into ice. Yeah. And again, not the, I don't think that Blizzard's designers sat down at the table and said, Okay, jump off mogul into ice. How does it do? You know, that's just something that is like a happy byproduct. Yeah. So that was a fun situation yeah. for me. And we've put that clip, I think, in other videos already. So people have probably seen it. And it's funny watching it back because it doesn't look like I'm going as fast as it felt like it I was going. It never does. Like, and it doesn't, like, the ice doesn't come through as much. You can hear it. Yeah. So hopefully people heard it. Um, but that was, so yeah, that was a really fun day. That wasn't my first experience on the new wrestler. We had skied it. We skied that sugar bush in like the rain. Yep. And then we skied rain, it sure. a couple other times. And then we had like that really good day and, and kind of got yep. to get back on it. And I had so much fun, like being playful of like yep. jumping off things and slashing a turn here and there. And I just kept thinking, like, whoa, this ski is like super playful. They made this thing so fun. Like it feels like a like almost like a twin tip park ski right. combined with a metal free ride ski. Like, what can this not do? So the airing into ice scenario was mostly um some sort of like weird stability test. Yep. Remember when I did that on like a core 99? The core 99, sure. It's like ice yep. bumps, and I was like, okay, I'm just gonna straight line through yep. that. It was like a similar thought process for me um and i think you nailed it in your description of like the looseness mm -hmm. because in those situations you need some looseness yeah like i wouldn't want to do that on a bona fide the ski would handle it yeah. but then what do you do afterwards and you could probably see it in that clip i'm probably not gonna play it again but you can go back to the intro of the video if you want you can see like after that like kind of like skidding out yeah. slightly yeah. while still going really fast and like that ski lets you do it and then you still feel very composed and in control as yeah. a skier so i thought that was really cool and for me like it's hard to it's hard to put my finger on another ski that like kind of does it better that like balances that stability with some looseness and then maneuverability for trees and quickness and stuff like yeah. that um i think like I think a lot of that is probably weight dependent. Like I'm much Skier lighter. weight? I think so. Yeah. Like I'm much lighter than both of you guys. So on a ski like this, like yeah. it's hard for me to think of a scenario where it's not stable enough for me, but then like I could see it, ha you know, like you were saying, like if you were out west, you'd probably want to go longer. And I think like, we can talk about length again, but I think for me, it probably would be the same, but I just keep coming back to that in my head with with wrestlers and maybe I'm getting older. I don't know. Like I am 37 and I used to ski a 191 and Forcer 110 and was like, this is, no, oh, this is good. And people would be like, what are you doing? And I'd be like, I want to ski this. Yeah. And like, I've in my head, I think about this ski a lot compared to the Enforcer 104, which is a ski that I love and like have presented my fondness for it through lots of our content and ski tests and anything. Um, but it's hard for me to ski this and not not just have in the back of my mind, like, well, maybe, maybe I should ski something lighter. And like, that's mostly just to like a reflection of myself. It's right. Like I'm probably, I don't know that I'm like less aggressive than I used to be, but I'm less like, less uh, comfortable on taking on risk. You're more calculated. Yeah. I think that's just a natural yeah. progression in a totally. maturing of a skier and a human being. Totally. So like I still love the Enforcer 104 and, and skis like yeah. the Enforcer 104. It's just when I ski this, I'm, I'm, it feels kind of like a better match for my weight and yep. like how I like to ski as a 37 year old. Um, it's pretty cool. And like I, you know, like I said, I, like I, there's, there's an application for, for both. It's just, I think that's like a good way to think about this ski in my opinion. Um, and 
yeah, it works really well. I've like, I, uh, I might find like, it's a bit floppy on firm snow. I mean, but then, like, 102, have, 104, like, what are we yeah. even talking about? It's but you, and you kind of, can't have that rise. Totally. That amount of rise does not stay planted. Totally. It's not what it's meant for. Yeah. But and, maybe maybe that's the difference that I feel between the 9 and the 10. Yeah. Because on the 9, like, we talked about it quite a bit in the rest of 9 review. Like, it, it carves yeah. beautifully. And, like, I, you know, this does too. But I think there's more of a, a limit to this for firm snow and pitch. You know, like yeah. the, it's not going to bite as much in the shovel. So then you like, there's again, that word looseness comes into play, like on yeah. its initiation. But like, what are we even talking about? Oh, who, it, who, you know, right. Who, who cares? It we encourages just a Thunderbird R15 wide body the other day. It's yeah. made by the same manufacturer. Yeah. So I don't know. It encourages creativity in those yes. situations. Like, oh, no, you can't just do what a Thunderbird does on this thing. Right. You have to be a little bit more playful yeah. dynamic and create a little bit more ingenuous with your yeah with your skiing, so. yeah um last thing i'll say about my experience on them is length uh, i skied the 180 a lot and it's great matt you and i this season we were both just exclusively skiing the 186 yeah and i can ski it and it's fine but it's hard for me to think that it's more appropriate in Vermont than the 180, similar to what you were saying, totally. 190, whatever, to 186. Um, so yeah, for me, I would choose, I would choose this length skiing here in Vermont, 100%. Like the, like I was saying, like I, no, I aired into ice on hayride. Yeah. Like I'm not gonna do that on a normal day, and it, it did it, and it was fine. Yeah, I do think, I do think I'm with you. If I was out west, I'd probably go 186, because that's the calculated thing. You don't have to be right out west. You can just let it run a little bit more. Yeah, or at least yeah. there's like, there's not a tree there and there. Right. Like you know, leaving you a three foot section to land and ski yeah. away, and there's a tree, 15 feet over there and 20 feet over there, so you can like, there's just it allows for more mistakes. Totally. Yeah, and, and you don't then, have those massive troughs in between those tight trees out there as well. Totally. You have to wiggle through. Yeah, right. It's like but, a, it's an interesting scenario where, like, I, I don't know what I would like. I'm not benefiting from the quickness of a 180 at West. I don't think so. What are the how many maybe like a tight shoot or something like that? But like, I don't even really ski that stuff like right. very often, <laughs> or like I will, but I don't necessarily seek it out yeah so then i would more be thinking like big wind lip natural hit maybe i'll do a cork seven yeah and then like then for something like that i want like a ton of stability on landing and the ability to just kind of like scarily ski away really fast and then stop way down there somewhere yep so makes perfect sense I fit great on the 186. That's I was I gonna. Go I wasn't gonna leave you out on the link yeah. assessment. No, nope, that was um, a perfect fit. I just figured. Yeah, I kind of assumed that you would be 186 in Vermont, 186 yep. in Utah, 186 in Alaska, 186 in maybe Chimney. the Bay. <laughs> <laughs> that's the that's the that's the that's the, that's the tipping the point. Cutoff. Yeah. Alaska. Yep. All right. Well. Looks like we need to buy some plane tickets to Alaska <laughs> to some big skis. prove this theory. Um, is there anything that either of you want to talk about that you feel like we missed? Not for me. I don't think so either. It's the best color. Of the rustlers? Yeah. 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 Right? Objectively? Um, sub so. Subjectively yeah. is for me. Um, yeah. Really in the... Big fan of that. In the free ride line, the... The Hustle 11 is really the only one that the black and, the the black black and pink. pink yeah. but. Well, I've, t I've mentioned this before and, you know, orange is like the team color yeah. for Blizzard. And you often see that on like the coaches has been orange. Yep. Um, and I like I like that they bring the team color into a ski that's accessible for a lot of skiers rather than just like. Hey, we made this athlete level ski and it's orange and it's sweet, but yeah. like you can't ski it. Yeah. Like, yeah. are, you, are you kidding yourself? Like you shouldn't buy this thing. And like this, um, very approachable. Yeah. Would you go all the way down to intermediate? Someone that's maybe larger 
like yeah. a heavier intermediate that needs stability on their feet. Larger or athletic. Yeah. That wants to kind of voyage into the wider that yeah. mid fat free ride category. Yeah. And so I'd I'd go upper athletic or heavier, stronger, intermediate, all yep. the way up through be the best skier in the world. Yep. Probably, Agreed. Probably still enjoy skiing the rest of the time. Yep. So thanks guys. Yeah, that was fun. Thank you. That was really fun. Um, let us know if you have any questions. If you have any questions for any of us as individuals, just make a note of that in your comment and happy to reply. Um, yeah. Winter. Yeah, it's here. We'll go skiing again tomorrow. Okay. Right. So let us know if you have any questions and we will talk to you soon. Bye. Bye.